Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one. Our rare is good, not amazing, but definitely playable. Our author rare here, Dramatic Finale, is quite powerful. My main problem is that with Finale is that it does commit us quite heavily to Silver Quill, not a card we can splash. So while it might be a more powerful card than, let's say, Heated Debate, our deck is more likely to end up with Heated Debate in the deck. Uh, and then there's the Bookworm, which is also a fun one if we want to try and get a nice ramp deck going. Um, we'll probably go with a Finale, but just be aware that committing to Silver Quill might not be the best idea, so we still want to keep an open mind. If we get some good black and white, I'm okay going Silver Quill, but if we see some other good cards, like a late heated debate, we should be able to pivot still. Alright, second pack. Best card overall, probably Emergent Sequence, the two mana ramp card. If we want to stick to Silver Quill, we either have Poet as a good aggressive two drop, or Pledge Mage if we want to go a bit more mid range. So those are kind of our options, which aren't great to be fair. Yeah, I guess we'll go for the Pledge Mage and see if we uh, can still stick to Black White. Well, there's a couple options here. Spiteful Squad's fine, if we want to stick to black-white. Otherwise, Field Trip I'm a big fan of. And then we could potentially pivot into black-green, abandon Finale, or maybe play it if we're heavy black. I'm just playing a little bit of green, although that's less likely. And then other good cards in the pack. Summoning's great, Reduced to Memory's okay. So for us, it's mainly a decision between Spiteful Squad and Field Trip. Squad is like fine, but not exciting, and there's a chance it wheels. So I think we speculate on field trip, and then, you know, there's still a chance we play finally, but there's also a chance we pivot into Wither Bloom. Interesting. So, Devastating Mastery is like a 4 mana slow down the opponent, or 6 mana wipe the board. Could be okay. Uh, Zephyr Boots probably at its best in a Wither Bloom deck, giving your big 5-5s five flying is pretty good. And then there's a Pest Summoning, which is also important to uh, grab with her Field Trip, for instance. And Aragon Poet, if we want to lean more aggressive Silver Quill. Uh, let's have some fun, take the Mastery and just go Black-White Control, maybe. Nothing wrong with Pledge Mage, although Expel might be where we want to be if we want to set up a slightly more controlling Silver Quill deck. Usually Silver Quill is more aggro, so it's unusual that we would want to go Silver Quill control. But with Finale and Mastery, we're well set up to maybe draft a slightly more controlling black-white deck. And I think Expel is going to be better for us there than Pledge Mage. Since we want to kind of sit back, play some removal, get to the late game, cast our big powerful spells. Another Emergent Sequence pretty late here, although Pilgrim of the Ages is kind of perfect for this deck. Helps us hit our land drops, an early creature that can trade off, and then we can get it back from the graveyard later. So, does seem like a good deck for Pilgrim. Uh, Define Strike would be great for the aggressive Silver Quill decks, nice cheap Magecraft enabler. Defend the Campus will probably get later if we want this effect, but it's probably worse than Expel for us. And then both the Uncommons here, Dispute and Sequence are great in their respective colors, but I think we're on black-white now. Alright, i probably still take the Laureates. Ladder of Acceptance honestly wouldn't be bad either. But Laureate's still a 2-2 flyer with upside. Probably end up with a few Inkling summonings to synergize with it. And we do eventually need to close out the game, and having some creatures for finale is also important, so... We'll take Laureates. And Spiteful Squad looks good. A good defensive creature again for the more controlling style of Silver Quill deck. Ingredients great in the more aggressive Silver Quill decks. I would still definitely play it here, but I think Squad's going to be better overall. Uh, go blank. Actually, consideration too. 
but I think I still take the squad. Again, need to keep our creature count high. Study break also a nice one for the aggressive Silver Quill decks. All right, so normally we would be happy with Poets at this deck, not necessarily, although I might still take it over Anatomy. Don't really see myself playing anything else. Maybe start from scratch if we splash red. So that's still maybe a pick over Poets, but we might end up needing a few two drops anyway. And even though we start out with a controlling build with Mastery and Finale, the cards are maybe gonna still push us towards a slightly more aggressive deck. I'll take another Poet, so at least, you know, the Poets are going late, so that's a good sign for Silver Quill to be open. And we did wield the Spiteful Squad, probably better than Revitalize. Although, another 2-drop we would definitely be happy with in a slightly more controlling white deck, just so we can spend our 2 mana at least gaining 3 life and replacing itself, as opposed to doing nothing. And another Poets. Alright, I mean... We'll see where we end up here, whether it's aggro or control, but a 13th big pledge mage is a good sign for Silver Quill, at least. Probably not going to play Elocution, but you never know. Alright, so first pack, Silver Quill very open, and speaking of Quills, Poet's Quill is awesome. Definitely the pick here. Makes it very easy to race with your arrogant Poets, and... Uh, yeah, just gotta grab some lessons to eventually pull out of the sideboard. Onslaught would also be nice, Trudge gets better once we have the Quill. But yeah, Quill's an absolute bomb. Next up, not the most exciting pack. I could take Spirit Summoning just to have a lesson that we can cast in case we don't end up with more of them. Not really interested in Elocution yet. Fractures, more of a sideboard card. Don't see myself main decking it. Divine Gambit can be okay, but still not excited about it. The thing that makes Gambit better here than it would be in a different format is that a lot of the expensive spells are those Prismari sorceries, which the opponent won't be able to put in play with it. Yeah, Crushing Disappointment would also be reasonable. I'm just worried that we're not going to end up with enough uh, lessons. So I think I still take the summoning here, but again couple options there. Let's see what the next pack offers. Callous Blood Mage is totally fine. 2-1 that draws a card for the most part. Sometimes can do something else. Yeah, Duress also a card that's maybe slightly better in this format than it would be elsewhere because of the many lessons that we can take with it. Access Tunnel is a little awkward with Dramatic Finale. But it's definitely the deck where we want Access Tunnel the most is an aggressive black-white Silver Quill deck. Alright, Boots is probably not needed when most of our creatures already fly. So we're looking at maybe the Snarl if we want to splash a red card, although so far don't have a reason to. Summoning as another random lesson we can grab. I don't think we need the Sector and Disappointment, you know, it's fine, but... Can maybe wheel a couple of these later. So we'll go with the pass summoning. Again, lessons are just so important. Alright, inkling summoning has to be the pick. Probably don't even have to think about this one too much. So our deck is shaping them nicely. Again, not quite sure how aggressively slanted it's gonna be. Probably gonna end up kind of in the middle, a bit more mid-rangey. But we've got some nice cards, especially the Poet's Quill and the Finale. All right, next up, could take another squad. Don't think we have a ton of synergy with the Stonebinders familiar. Leech Fanatic also fine to drop, especially if we have some pump spells to go with it. And then there's the Agonizing Remorse as just fine two mana interaction. This is going to be better in the more controlling build. So it's probably Remorse vs. Fanatic, since we already have a double Spiteful Squad here. I think I'm leaning Remorse. Ooh, wow. That's an incredibly late Killian, so Silver Quill's just wide open here. Environmental Sciences would also be great, although it doesn't look like we're splashing, so it would mostly be to hit our land drops. 
But yeah, you see Killion. And an Apprentice is fine too. Although it's kind of close with Reduced to Memory. Having removal in the sideboard, that's not Introduction to Annihilation, can be nice. Although Apprentice is pretty decent too. Close call. Could see taking either one. And then we wield the Trudge. Do have a bit of synergy with it, don't we? Poet's Quill mostly. Kilian can get it back. And we've got the Pests as well. So it should be okay. And we wield Divine Gambit, Elocution. Elocution is kind of cute with Kilian, but probably still don't want a second copy. Uh, Archivists probably not needed. So maybe Gambits can experiment with it. All right, wield the ingredients. Kind of happy with it. And we wield Disappointment if we want it. Does the sector do anything for us? It does synergize with the uh, pass summoning, I suppose. And it's a way to enable our own dramatic finale. All right, we got it now. How many crows and grips do I have? Two. Don't expect to need more than two. Oof, wow. Yeah, Silver Quill's just wide open here. Probably go with the two drop over another squad. Mostly for curve. Last pack. Not the most exciting pack for us. Probably just taking a campus over summoning and ingredient. Again, ingredient would be great in a more aggressively slanted Silver Quill deck. But we're looking kind of mid-rangey. And we definitely appreciate a campus, although there's a good chance this one would wheel. We're looking at Necrotic Fumes as a nice lesson. Shield Mage, which has a decent chance of wheeling too, given how open Silver Quill has been. And then Hunt for Specimens, also a nice two drop. I guess there's also Guiding Voice, which is worth pointing out. I don't have a ton of ways to learn yet, so maybe it's the hunt. And then hope to wheel either Shield Mage or Fumes. I don't know, Fumes is pretty versatile though. Yeah, it's close. Spectre is nice, although so is the Orator. And we do have a lot of useful keywords in our deck between Flying, Death Touch. Uh, do we have any Life Linkers out there? I guess Killion also gives Menace. Frog as Menace. Yeah, the Orator's pretty good here. Although I'm a big fan of the Spectre as a finisher too. Hoo hoo, wow. Elite Spellbinder, get in there. Anything else worth talking about? Study Break would be okay. Not a huge fan of the Incaster, although we do have a bit of synergy with uh, the Spiteful Squads. God's Willing is another good one mana trick, but it's got to be the Spellbinder here. Onslaughts could use more spot removal. Auric Lore Mage. A 3 3 that can potentially grow over time, and at the very least thins out our deck of lands in the late game. Seems okay. Uh, our deck ended up kind of aggressive, so Expel not as good as it might appear. Probably don't need another Poets. Sure. Wow. Vanishing Verse, 7th pick. And Professor, and Summoning. Jeez. This pack is stacked. Can I just take all of them and call it a day? I mean, Professor might be better than Verse here, to be fair. It's just a 2-drop that gets free value, and we've got a lot of good... Lessons especially now that I picked up fumes, and we're a bit light on ways to learn. Although Verse is great, can answer a lot of problematic cards, even though it misses on some of the multicolor stuff. Another Killian. Cram Session also a consideration, but uh, I'll take another Killian. Great with our Thunderous Orator as well. Silver Quill was open. 
Might play another ingredient. Wish I had maybe a pump spell here or there. So that's something we're missing. And we don't have that much removal. But we do have a lot of evasive creatures, so that's gonna be our main strength. So got a lot of cuts to make. Guiding voice is actually pretty good here. And we wield a uh, Spectre too. Just got all, everything we ever could have hoped for. Don't think Star Pupil's gonna make it. This is gonna be a difficult deck to build since we have so many options. Even an Ink Caster. Maybe Ink Caster actually is good enough in this deck because we have so many evasive creatures. But we'll see. It's also good with the Trudge. Don't think we're playing the Novice Dissector. Study break, even wield. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of down with a study break. Eager first year. <laughs> yeah, I could make this a 60 card deck if I wanted to. Alrighty, this is gonna be tough. So let's put our non creature spells on the side first. Don't think I'm playing Elocution, although maybe it's actually good enough in this deck with double Killion. Alright, so 52 cards, and I already have my lessons in the sideboard. We've got Fumes, Summoning, 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 so we've got all the summonings we can cast, and the removal spell, so pretty nice balance of lessons to learn. Definitely playing Professor, definitely playing Quill. And I think both of these are going to be good enough too. So I guess the first qu question we have to ask ourselves, how aggressive is this deck? If we treat this like an aggro deck, we're maybe going to cut some cards that we otherwise wouldn't. Like maybe Devastating Mastery doesn't quite fit into the aggro deck, whereas it's fine if we end up a bit more mid-range. So how does this deck win? Well, the overall card quality is high. We have... A lot of evasion, menace especially, quite a few flyers if we run the poets. We could struggle if the opponent has a big reach creature, since we don't have that much removal. Although we still have some big creatures like Pledge Mage that could do some damage. Can drain them with a Spectre, Finale can take over a game. I guess we'll just start with cutting the slightly weaker cards, so first year. Leech Fanatic, probably cuttable here when we have double Killian. Uh, three mana. I don't know if this is a Pilgrim of the Ages deck anymore, but it's also nice three drop to have since we're kind of light on three drops. So those probably stay. And then at four mana, can maybe cut one Spiteful Squad. And then the Incaster also goes down in value a little bit, so that can probably go. So how many creatures is this? 20, so still need to cut a few. Maybe cut another ingredient and poet and make it slightly more mid-rangey. This looks okay in terms of both curve and card quality. And then taking a look at our non-creature spells. I'll put the more questionable cards on the side. So I could just cut all, th all six of these and call it a day. And then we would keep voice and study break as ways to learn, get access to our sideboard. Poet Squill, of course, not going to get cut. Onslaught and Finale are pretty good too, so... Yeah, maybe that's just uh, the way we built this. Expel would be better in a more controlling deck, but we ended up kind of aggro anyway. Disappointment is a bit of card draw, which, you know, is nice. But we have Learn as kind of a pseudo card draw effect. Elocution has synergy with Killian. But if the opponent kills our stuff, it can be a bit underwhelming. And then Mastery is probably not needed when we can just uh, be the aggressor in some matchups. Yeah, Divine Gambit is definitely an option since our deck is light on spot removal. So I could see keeping that one, but then we still need to cut something else. Uh, I think this is a 17 lander, 
since we do still have some expensive cards and our lessons give us a mana sink, we also have Spectre, which can sink six mana for a nice drain effect. And again, the learn mechanic also gives us more ways to spend our mana. We've got a quill we can move around. I think Trudge is decent. We have double Killian for lifelink, Poet's Quill, and Plunge Mage can also gain life. We've got the Pest Tokens in the sideboard, and Witherbloom Plunge Mage is also great, so yeah, I think the Trudge definitely stays. Yeah, the Auric Lore Mage, you know, it's not a bomb rare by any means. We're probably not going to exile many instants and sorceries, so it's a 3-3 that slowly exiles lands out of our deck and sometimes can threaten to become a 4-4, so it can dissuade attacks from the opponents. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, I do have a bit of synergy with the ingredient. We can put ingredient in the graveyard and then draw a card with it. Yeah, I guess we can also put trudge in the graveyard. So we do have kind of two medium combos with it. So maybe it's still good enough. Besides, you know, having those other effects. Yeah, I don't love Divine Gambit, but I do agree that our deck could use one more spot removal spell. Maybe I can still get away with 16 land, because we don't really have card draw. And I'm kind of happy staying at 4 mana for a while, don't have that many 5 drops. Pilgrim also helps us hit our land drops. If I had environmental sciences, it would be easier to play 16 land. It's a little greedy. But... It's only one land at the end of the day. And learn can also loot if we have to. Yeah, alright. This is okay. And then uh, our mana looks good. 8 swamps, 7 planes, 1 dual land. Next turn, I'm kind of liking double spell over squad, but we'll see. It was a short tenure for Killian. Alright, now I regret to trade, but that's fine. Alright, so play finale, fly the poets, take a bunch of damage, or I can wait, and then this turn, guiding voice, the apprentice, and grab, what do we grab? Probably something that we won't play this turn, since I want to play pilgrim, so maybe inkling summoning. So maybe next turn's a good turn to play finale. The 2 2 first strike is doing a decent job on defense. Could also play Pledge Mage next turn summoning. And just, I mean, we're definitely the beat down in this game. So we can afford to trade some life. Yeah, what does playing finale do for me? It avoids the scenario where our opponent just kills a bunch of our creatures. Which is also fair. I think I still pledge mage. Alright. 
That's fair. Now does that change my play? Opponent got their own inkling. Yeah, I guess now that they can trade for my pledge mage. I like this more. So, opponent red white splash black it looks like. Eh, at least we get a token. So I don't want to block the Historian since we're not going to get a token this turn. Since we already got one. Right, so now we can double spell. I'm kind of okay just attacking with Poet without giving it flying. And if they trade, I get a token. And keep Pilgrim back. Right, now we can chump if they attack with both trade pilgrim and yeah final is just doing too much work here on the play two lander sketchy but orator plus poets is nice i think i'll try it so we probably want to lead with poets still Close call, since I won't be able to give Orator flying next turn if I play Orator into Poet. Opponent's playing a white deck, so those are usually aggressive. We'll reevaluate next turn if we want to pay the life or not. They've got their own Poet, so just gonna attack, offer the trade. Yeah, Orator seems better. Then if we hit land for Spectre, this flies as well. If we don't draw land, probably just play Apprentice Pass. And then Lord Mage can start setting up our Graveyard Synergies, get the Trudge and the Unwilling Ingredient in there. I guess we were lagging a bit. Alrighty then, <laughs> play Spectre. Uh, so we'll kill Spectre, keep up the pressure. Opponent is still paying the two life, that's surprising. So they must have an answer for Spectre then. Uh, probably don't want a Divine Gambit just yet. So this is most likely to gain lifelink, so having Apprentice out there to trade could be nice. Or I can just take the hit for a bit and then get the Lore Mage in play so we can start growing. Yeah, they could have a way to give this flying at instant speed as well. But that's a fine trade. So we'll start by attacking. Study break. 
fair enough, that also works. But at least they don't get the benefit from Magecraft. Let's see if they have an Inkling summoning, maybe. Nope, Environmental Sciences. So we'll have to take a lifelink hit here, most likely. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with a Lore Mage. Probably keep it back to threaten growing up to a 4-4. And then maybe put Unwilling Ingredients in the graveyard. Since I don't have an easy way to gain life other than Spectre at 6. To get the Trudge back. That's kind of a late game grindy plan. Okay, so that can also give Pledge Mage flying. Maybe now I'm okay with the trade, since otherwise they can easily give Pledge Mage flying, but they're out of spellcraft maybe, so they wouldn't be able to give a lifelink necessarily. And we're still winning the race. I think I take it. Laureate's awesome. Opponent's got one card in hand that we don't know about, so Divine Gambit's looking good. <laughs> Another study break. So we want to activate this in response. And what do I get? Thing just the ingredients. And then depending on what they learn for. I mean I'm probably still playing apprentice here over gambits. All right, prophecy, that's fine. I'm okay trading for Apprentice, and then we get to keep Gambit in hand for a bit longer. Still have Spectre if we draw an extra land we can activate, so our late game plan's looking good. Lore Mage to put Trudge in Graveyard to get it back, so we're pretty well set up to grind. Right, they did not give it flying this time. I'll trade. Alrighty, so... They cannot give this flying. So Laureate, Spectre, Orator attack. Not sure what to do with Lore Mage. Doesn't seem great to attack yet. And then I have the option of either drawing with ingredients, playing Gambit. Could also Gambit now. Feels a bit of a waste. Maybe just activate Spectre. And then Lore Mage maybe wants to grow up to a 4-4 before starting to attack. They're gonna have to spend 4 mana giving the first year flying. They can also pay 4 mana instead of paying 2 life. But with the Spectre gaining us 2, we're not in any danger of getting killed by these flyers. So reasonable chance we can just kill them next turn. They're gonna be at 8 end of turn, I get to untap. Fly over for six. So I'm taking five, sure. And what's the 
instant or sorcery I least would like to draw. Yeah, I don't think this matters. We'll go with guiding voice. Move to combats. They need another study break, maybe. Although even a study break doesn't do it. Sure, I could activate Lore Mage, but it's a bit of a waste of time. All lessons are sorcery speed, so we're guaranteed to hit for four, activate Spectre, and kill them. Alright, we get to play our Poet Squill once again. Pretty nice in combination with our flying creatures. I'm so ingrained now with holding my equipment after playing Zendikar, but Quill we can just play on turn two, although now Arrogant Poet will probably make an appearance first. Oof, man. So many good cards. Kind of like Professor over Poet now. Although we do have the life link to back up the life loss so we can easily keep paying the two life on Poet, and I have a three drop so I don't need Professor right away. Question is which card to play next turn? Probably the Laureates. Since I'm not guaranteed to trigger Magecraft on a Pledge Mage. So now the major concern is missing my land drops, although I can always learn discarding as well. Sadly, no environmental sciences in the board. Opponent is ramping nicely, so we'll see what happens. Alright, decision time. I can quill equip. Or I can play Spectre. Probably Spectre for now. Just add more pressure. And Quill is going to make it almost impossible for them to race unless they have a bunch of removal. Although I could also drop Finale before that happens, so at least I have some backup inklings. So if we get to untap, I'll probably play Finale before Quill Equip. Yeah, opponent goes digging. Probably for a bit of interaction here. If they're playing Solve the Equation, they must have some very powerful cards. Yep, Mage Duel, so... Perfect turn to play finale. Oof, if our opponent had slightly different mana untapped, they could have done some damage with a mage duel, but now we're looking good. And in fact, I'm not gonna give this flying. If they want to trade and give me a flyer, that's fine by me. At 15, let's say they have the Exponential growth, which would be the worst case scenario, double, double. So that would put me at one life. Since it would hit me for 14. So I'm not even dead to that. Next turn, it's time for Quill to make sure we don't get outraced on the ground somehow. I guess I didn't account for Mage Duel giving one extra power, so I guess I was dead to exponential growth here, since they could growth and then Mage Duel afterwards for one mana. But playing around the rare is usually not always a great idea, unless you've seen it in a previous game. Mage Duel. That's fine. 
Well, we're threatening seven in the air. So Poet Squill would be lethal and uh, activating Spectre if we draw land as well. They might have a second removal spell. Yeah, Dramatic Finale can be awesome. There will be times where, you know, you top deck it late and it doesn't do anything, but in most normal games of Limited, it's going to be quite strong. Oh, why is it showing all islands? I'm very confused. Either way, um, yeah, probably go for Quill Equip. So they might have a Baryon Books. Uh, negate. So no Quill for me. That's fine. So I can put them to one. Play Pledge Mage. Seems fine. So I don't think my opponent actually has this many basic lands in hand. Alright, GG's. On the play, great hands. Apprentice into probably Poet Squill. Don't know if we'll play the Guiding Voice just yet. I'm gonna just play Trudge here. Uh, can't Laureate plus Guiding Voice, unfortunately. We can put Quill Equip, which is efficient. So I don't hate Equip the Apprentice attack with it, since we can easily get the Trudge back from the Graveyard, although then if they kill my Apprentice, I'm kind of left stranded without any creatures. Attack both and just play Laureate for now. Or Squad, which is more mana efficient. But I'm okay with uh, some trades here. Alright, that's fine. And then if we draw any lands, we can Laureate plus Quill. If we draw planes, probably still Laureate Quill. Oh, Spectre. Ooh, seeing the Elite Spellbinder for the first time. Alternative would be Quill Equip, but then they would maybe just trade for Trudge. I do want to play Spellbinder before attacking, since I probably want counters here instead of on the Trudge. Although, I guess we'll have to wait and see what they are working with. Alright, so Ether Helix I want to get rid of. Or at least make it more expensive. And then Umbral Juke can force me to sacrifice. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. 
Yeah, Umbral Juke might also just make a 2-1 flyer to trade for Spellbinder. So we're gonna go Letter plus Juke. Oh, never mind. Frost Trickster taps down squad. And land means I can Laureate plus Quill. If I play Laureate first, I'm okay trading, since we'll get a counter too. Opponent is getting close to casting the Helix, I suppose. Could also play the Quill, Equip and Guiding Voice. And then they can trade. Yeah, that's also reasonable. And then if they juke, I just sank this. Although then, next turn, if they bounce, it sets me back quite a bit since we lose the equip and the counter. But replaying Spellbinder is also kind of neat. Sure. Alright, we'll get summoning. And then probably... get either fumes or pass summoning. Pass summoning can play around the sacrifice, but they're most likely just gonna make a flyer anyway. Now if they juke first, I put all my counters on Spellbinder and then they bounce it with Helix, that's gonna be annoying. Opponent's going to cultivate, so they will have access to the bounce spell next turn. Alright, so probably play Laureate and then attack. If my opponent forces me to sack, I can sack squad. If they make a flyer to double block, that's fine by me. I still get back trudge as well. Put on double blocks. And then where to put the counter? Laureate's cheaper to replay. Either way, it's getting bounced here. Yeah, the counter has more inherent synergy on squad, but given that we know about Aether Helix, I think I just wanna have a cheaper creature to replay. Because this is great for trading for a big serpent. Although maybe they would have still bounced a flyer even if we make a 3-3 squad. Seems unlikely though. Oh wow, multiple choice. Yeah, we faced that card a few times today. And it's always been great for the opponent. Guess now I bounce squad. We've got a nice life total here, so we can afford to take a bit of damage on the way back. So outputting more damage ourselves seems like the priority. So six mana, can double three. So Trudge Pledge Mage. They want to play summoning and have it killed by the bounce spell. Alright. Fair enough. Summoning can give this flying as well. Hmm. 
All right, could kill the token, hit for four, but again, if they trade, Trudge is going to come back at some point. So I feel okay attacking into it. Like, I'm actively happy with this trade. Opponent's probably locking down the Pledge Mage. And then I can keep my removal for their flyer. Yeah, we're sort of seeing the Trudge do some work here with Quill. Not that the Quill needs much help. Alright, let's see what they grab. Maybe a Fractal Summoning or Annihilation. So we've started to face more of these 4-5 color decks that are just playing all the good cards. And it's definitely a viable strategy in this format, but important that you get some cards like Environmental Sciences in the sideboard. So just an Elemental Summoning. Our plan is to win with Flyers, so we don't really care about a 4-4 on the ground. Alright, so don't want to trade for the Trickster, but I also don't want to spend my turn on Onslaught. So we'll just play Squad plus Equip, or we can play Ingredient. Um, probably just Equip. Don't think we're attacking with the Ingredient anytime soon. And then next turn we can Onslaught and give this flying and hit for 6 in the air. This trades for the Fractal. So we yeah, have... Uh, they just play according to plan. We'll Onslaught, attack, get back Trudge, I think. Ingredient plus Fumes, also kind of nice, although it does exile Ingredient so we don't get to draw with it anymore. Alright, opponent's getting a bit desperate, sacrifices the letter. Alright, and then Fumes can enable Magecraft again, so they'll need another Flyer or some interaction. If the 1-1 one -one attacks, I'm not going to block. Alright, Bookworm, that's a good one. Although happy to exile it with Fumes so it doesn't come back. Oof, dramatic finale. That's a nice one too. Probably just Ingredient Fumes. Hit for six. Not the most mana efficient turn, but I could move the quill if I wanted to. I kind of want to keep the quill on the inkling so I don't have to re-equip next turn. So, inkling is lethal by itself. Such more which doesn't do it. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. And we got to seven wins after a bit of a false start. Crack some packs.
Compulsive research is a nice one. Pack one, pick one. What do we take here? I'm sort of biased towards the blue deck, so I might take research over one of these other ones. Um, if we're ignoring the wild card. There's a couple options, but probably take inspiration. And the spark's good too. Although probably not as good as command, which is also very splashable, whether it's in blue-red splash white or some weird four or five color deck. Doomblade, classic, still very good. And yeah, probably better than Vanishing Verse under most circumstances. Ooh, Primal Command. Fun uh, card for Constructed, potentially. Don't know if it's better than a Gnarled Professor. These are both excellent. Pestilent Cauldron. But yeah, we've seen Killian do a lot of work, both from our deck and the opponents. So that's also a difficult one to pass up, even though it commits you to a two-color pair right away. All right, well, we had some fun drafts today. And uh, always nice when we get a good run with a couple of wins too, but yeah, overall enjoying Strixhaven and make sure to check out the YouTube if you haven't already. We'll be back Tuesday with another Magic Arena stream. You can check the schedule in the description. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.